Hello guys. So last time, while we were trying to do the initial steps of analysis, we discovered a big loophole in what we need to do. Uh, basically, when doing all this preparation here and analysis, initially I took all the cards and I did not care what is what. But now that I look at the, all these options that we're trying to get out of the system, I have figured out that we need to change a few things. And here's what we need to do. So first thing, we need to understand that we have player's hand, we have the other's hand, that's any other player, then we have the table. So the table is common to the player's hand and to the other person's hand. Now, your prediction, so player's predictions, is based on the player's hand, plus we have, we have table known, now that I'm thinking about this, and we have table unknown, right? So these are a total of five cards that we get. This is the player's hand, this is the other's hand. We have the player predictions and we have other predictions. Now other predictions can be, each one of these actually can be in two different varieties. What you have, this is a single prediction, and then what you can get, that's the best that you can do. Then for the other predictions we have best they have and the best they can get. So there are four different steps of prediction. The What you have, this is basically now and this is later and these two apply equally for this right here. So there we go. This is basically how it is. So you have the player's hand, which is only available to these predictions, plus the table. So these seven here, and then we have these. Now there's many categories. There's the, when you have the hand, basically known as the pre-flop. Then you have the flop. Then you have the turn. And then you have the river, obvious. So there's all these numbers all these different variable uh, numbers that you need to look into. So let's go ahead and try to figure this out. So before the flop, right, pre-flop, what does pre-flop mean? No table at all. That's what the pre-flop means. The flop means that there are three known and two unknown. And then we have the turn and the river. In the river, obviously, this is what I have. No table. So basically this is, let's do it this way, this is five unknown. And this is five known. This would be four known, one unknown. So there's always for a player's hand, there's always two known in a player's hand, and in the other's hand, there's always two unknown. So this is the entire combo system that we're going to have to add up. This is the table. Right here I have the status in each one of the cases. And all these will need to participate together to figure out what's going on. So. In the preflop, I have my hand. So for the player, we have two known. In the preflop, we have two known. And what you can get later, you have two known and five unknown. That's how you add up to seven. Now the five unknown is a really, really hard thing to do. I'm going to star this. This is really, really hard to predict. Now, in this case, best they have two unknown, 
So the best they have is always going to be, for example, a high card ace. It's pretty much known that that's going to be the highest thing you can possibly have. It's pretty easy to predict this. This, on the other hand, is probably not just the hardest to predict. This is not just a star. This is also every possible combination in poker. Every possible combination in poker. And if we were to do this mathematically, then this would be 52, 51, 50, 49, 48, 47, 46. Those are 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Divided by 7 factorial, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And wait while the Google servers solve this. There we go. You're looking at 133, so let's say 134 million combinations. Every possible, this is 134 million combinations. This is pretty intense to solve, right? If we are going to solve five unknowns, knowing two of the cards, this would be 50 times 49 times 48 times 47 times 46 divided by 5, 4, 3, 2. Let's look at that. And that is about 2 million. 2 million. So this here is about 2 million combinations right here for this. So in order to process this, we have to process 2 million combinations. In order to process this, we need 134 million combinations. So these are pretty, pretty intense. Uh, we are not going to have to deal, we don't want to deal with those. Now, the next thing is the flop. Now the flop is going to create an interesting dynamic. First, in all these cases, we have two known. And this is your hand. This here is two known hand. And this will always be there. In all these cases, you have your hand known. In every single one of these cases, you know your hand. Here, to unknown, that is your unknown hand. Your hand, the, the other player's hand, will just never be known. So in all these cases, the hand is unknown. The difference comes when we add the table. In the table, when we add three known and two unknowns, in this scenario, basically what you have now, and basically what you can get. So this is what you can get. What you have now is the three knowns only. In this case, you will have four known. And in this case, you will have five known. So in this case, these are equal, as you can see. These are pretty much the same exact thing. Uh, and the beauty is that this also applies here. So when we get to the river, basically you have what you got, what they got, what they can have. That's it. Those are the only cases available. In our initial case, this is way too complicated. We will not deal with it. This is way too complicated. We will not deal with it. This is pretty known what they're going to have. So they're obviously going to have, for example, the ace of spades. If you don't have it, that's going to be the number one thing that someone else can have. This is a very boring, basic thing. So at the preflop, there's literally not much information out there. Now, when we move on here, we add a single unknown, and we'll need to process this. And here, again, we shall do the same thing in both cases, hopefully. So when we do this in both cases, there we go. Now, looking at this list, best they have right now, best they can get. Um, best they have basically bases the knowledge on the three knowns and two unknowns only. This is basically the best they have, if I want to consider that. So basically, 
I will be fighting with what I have, but this is pretty much a useless, this column here is pretty useless. Because when you're playing with other players, they are pretty much playing on the best that they can get, not on what they have now, right? So we need to calculate the best you can get and then the best they can get. You have the advantage of knowing two extra cards that the others do not. So that is the added advantage for the player. We'll have to come back and work this out in a bit. So there's this complex table of what is going on. And this table will need to be enforced into what's happening here. To do this, by looking at this entire table, what is our conclusion? The conclusion is that we will have two known hand and then two unknown hand and then we will have the known table and then the unknown table right so two known hand two unknown hand known table unknown table now the known unknown table which means that there's only three one one so in any one case you will either have you'll have one of the following cases five unknown zero known or you'll have three known there so you can have zero known size to text zero known why is this not typing correctly there we go zero known three known four known five known the unknowns will either be five unknowns, two unknowns, one unknown, zero unknowns. There we go. This is how this works. Here, I'm going to have to create two. Here, I'm going to have to create another two than this one. We'll come back to that. So this was just an explanatory 10 minutes. I'm sorry, but this is basically how the logic of what I'm going to do next works. So it's an important episode. I will see you guys next time.